a soldier, a bear, and the First World War. This is the untold history of Winnie the Pooh. It was August 24th, 1914, when the train carrying Canadian soldiers pulled into White River, Ontario. I like to imagine it was a hot summer's day as the steam engine pulled into the station. Smoke billowing from its stack, the station alive with the sounds of bells and screaming whistles as Dr. Harry Colburn stepped onto the station's platform. Born in England, Colburn moved to Canada when he was 18, attending the Ontario Veterinarian College and graduating in 1911. Then, moving to Winnipeg, Manitoba, he settled down. He loved his city, his country, and most importantly, animals. Along with working for a branch of Manitoba's Department of Agriculture called the Health of Animals, he also signed on to the Canadian Army Veterinarian Corps, which brings us back to the train station. Colburn and his fellow soldiers were on their way to Valcartier, Quebec for military training before heading off to England and joining the First World War. While in White River, Dr. Colburn came across a trapper. Now history doesn't tell us much about this man, but I have to assume he was at the station selling his furs to travelers coming into town. Every train passing through from east to west or vice versa stopped at White River, making it a good spot for him to try and sell his wares. This particular trapper, however, had something that caught Colburn's eye. Along with furs, he also had leashed beside him a tiny bear cub. The man explained he had shot and killed the cub's mother, but didn't have the heart to kill the young bear. Instead, he captured the cub and brought it back with him. Being an animal lover and veterinarian, the bear won him over quickly and he offered to pay the man $20, roughly 508 Canadian or 592 US dollars today for the young bear cub. The trapper accepted, and when the soldiers left Valcartier, they had one additional passenger. He called her Winnie after Winnipeg. Dr. Colburn trained her using rewards of apples, corn syrup, and condensed milk. She slept under his cot at night, and during the day, she followed him and the other soldiers around like a pet, leading many to say she was more dog than bear. While in Valcartier, the bear quickly became a favorite to the soldiers, and eventually she became the regiment's mascot. By the time Colburn and Winnie left Canada for Salisbury Plain, England, she was well accustomed to people and posing for photographs. This would help her out immensely later in life. The two spent seven weeks in England, Winnie enjoying much the same fame she had while in Valcartier, but the war was ramping up and seemed to have no end in sight. Eventually, Colburn received orders to remove Winnie from their headquarters. They were leaving for the trenches in France, and Colburn agreed he couldn't bring the bear to a war zone. So on December 9th, he packed up Winnie and brought her to the London Zoo. It must have been hard for him to leave her behind. In his journals, he wrote he had every intention of returning for her at the end of the war, going as far as making the promise to Winnie herself. I can't even begin to imagine the horror he must have saw on the battlefield, death around every corner, day after day of endless bloodshed. He must have often thought of Winnie. Perhaps it was the thought of their next visit that kept him going. According to his son, every leave he received from the war, he would return to the London Zoo to visit Winnie with each return both of them changing a little bit more. He must have noticed a change in her. She was at the zoo for four years when the war ended, by that time a fully grown bear. While he fought, Winnie's time at the zoo was a positive one. By the war's end, she had become an attraction for thousands of visitors. Her bear keepers saw her as a completely trustworthy animal, claiming she was not only the tamest bear at the zoo, but the tamest they had ever had. Children were not only allowed to pet and feed Winnie, but they could also ride her. In all her time at the London Zoo, thousands of children came and saw her, 
eventually making her a celebrity in her own right. I like to think with every visit from the war, Colburn would smile as the children ran up to his beloved bear. When the war ended, Colburn returned to London and remained for a while, likely visiting Winnie every chance he had until it was time for him to return to Winnipeg. By this time, five years had gone by. She was a main attraction for the zoo and had spent more time with the children of London than she ever had with him. It must have been bittersweet when he visited Winnie for the last time, knowing he had promised to bring her back to Canada, but seeing the love and care she was receiving, he could no longer keep his promise. She had found her home. Winnie had achieved a level of stardom most people dream of. In the years that would follow, countless news stories told of the extraordinary bear and her friendly nature. She had become a feature attraction in London. This is likely what led Colburn making the decision to leave Winnie behind as a thank you to the London Zoo for taking care of her. In 1919, a plaque was dedicated to Colburn, now a captain in the military. Years after the war ended, a man by the name of Alan was visiting the zoo with his son. Every visit, Alan's son would always ask to see his favorite bear, Winnie. And thanks to her remarkably tame nature, the boy even had the chance to pet her and feed her a jar of honey and condensed milk. You see, Alan's son, Christopher Robin, loved Winnie so much he changed the name of his stuffed bear from Edward to Winnie. I'm sure you've probably figured out by now that Alan was none other than A.A. A. Milne the author of Winnie the Pooh. You might say it was serendipitous that Colburn happened to be on that train station that day to buy Winnie from the trapper. It's simply remarkable she went from a train station in a small, rural town to traveling halfway around the world to delight and bring joy to thousands in London, eventually inspiring a book series that would sell millions of copies in multiple languages. As for Winnie, the average lifespan of a bear in the wild is 10 years, but Winnie lived a comfortable life at the zoo and lived to be a modest 20 years old. She passed away on May 12, 1934. Her life was spent bringing joy and happiness to visitors of the zoo and her legacy continues to do the same over a hundred years since her chance meeting with Colburn. As for Colburn, he returned to his home in Winnipeg and opened his own veterinarian practice eventually building a small animal hospital in the rear of his family home, dedicating his service to the numerous animals who came through his door. Their story was almost lost to time if it hadn't been for Colburn's son, Fred. While visiting the zoo in the 80s, he discovered much of his father's legacy had been forgotten. Going back home, he retrieved his father's journals that recounted the tales of Winnie, and now today a statue of Harry and Winnie sits to commemorate their memory and his story would go on to be immortalized in Canadian Heritage Minutes, short one-minute videos airing during commercial breaks in the 90s, teaching countless children on the Canadian roots of Winnie the Pooh. Winnie's legacy is spread beyond books to also include television shows, movies, stuffed animals, toys, and even this Lego set, which brings classic moments from the stories to life in this diorama of Winnie the Pooh's home.
the set cost $139.99 Canadian or $99.99 US dollars. It has 1,265 pieces, 12 stickers, and 22 printed tiles. The printed tiles include four honeypots, Mr. Sanders sign, two 2x2 two two round log patterns, and finally 15 1x1 one one round prints, including two ladybugs, four small wooden knot patterns, and nine bees. The set is numbered 21326, and it was released April 1st, 2021. It's from LEGO Ideas and is based off the set designed by Ben Alder. The set has five total minifigures, Winnie the Pooh, Piglet, Rabbit, Eeyore, and Tigger 2. As for my opinion on the set, it is a great set for minifigures and it would be a great gift for anyone who grew up with Winnie the Pooh as it does have several Easter eggs fans of the books would recognize. The house itself opens up revealing the interior which features a living room, door entry, bedroom, and attic. If used as a decorative piece, it would look great in a child's bedroom high up on a shelf. As for some aspects of the set I didn't really care for is the foliage for the trees. I found it very repetitive and in the back of the house there was a blank space where it seemed like there should have been another branch. Uh, for me, I added a one by one log tile to give the impression that it had been cut off. Uh, really, it could have been a design choice simply not to cover the roof of the house. And another issue I noticed with the set is that there isn't a lot of room in the front to place your minifigures, making it a very cramped place to stack them. For the Easter eggs that I found, there's a mirror from the books where Pooh does his exercises. Up in the attic is a box of Pooh sticks, as well as a map of the Hundred Acre Woods. The bee picture in the living room has a picture of two bees representing the children of the fan designer, while the book on the bed has his initials on the inside. The balloon that Winnie the Pooh holds is the balloon from the very first story he's in, and the bees themselves spin that are around the tree. On the side, a small bug sits on the tree, likely representing one of Rabbit's many friends and relations, and quite possibly the character Small, though in the books he's drawn similar to a beetle rather than a snail. As for extra pieces, these are the ones that I had left over. Uh, and Oddly enough, I had an extra Lego coral piece that was loose in the box. I've not known Lego to include an extra piece this large, so I assume it's a mistake from the factory. Leave a comment below if you found any loose pieces of coral in your sets, or if you've ever experienced any Lego packaging mistakes. This has been Untold History. Thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe.